I've been studying medicine for just over three years now and it's been a great experience overall. I've learned a great deal about the body and the way diseases work and I've met a lot of wonderful people and amazing friends along the way. But I can't just tell you that it's been all positive and it's been a wonderful experience all throughout. Just like anything else, it has its ugly parts and its ugly parts are very prominent. There's a lot of negative emotions and negative feelings associated with the field. Ask any medical student and they'll tell you they've experienced their own share of overwhelming thoughts thoughts and negative emotions when it comes to the field of medicine. Whether it's the overwhelming workload that's expected of you or the fierce competition you face, these negative emotions are universal almost. And I want to shed light on these negative thoughts and these negative emotions because they are also part of the medical experience. If we just focus on the highs, we're going to glorify the experience and that's not the real thing. Just like anything in life, there are positives and negatives. A lot of the time, especially in the online space, we tend to only focus on the positive bits when it comes to medicine, but we don't show the whole picture. And it's important to discuss these things because it helps students realize that these feelings and these negative emotions inside of them are normal. That they're just part of the experience as well. That most people don't have everything figured out. And that way we can learn from these experiences, be okay with them, and move past them. I've experienced my own share of negative thoughts and emotions. There were times where I quit my hobbies to pursue studying more because I thought I wasn't doing enough, that I didn't belong until I committed completely to medicine. There were times where I doubted my entire studying ability, my entire studying plan, because I didn't think it was optimized, because I didn't think it yielded results. There were times where I saw my colleagues studying for three, four, five hours, and I couldn't even get myself to study for an hour. I couldn't even get myself to study every single day. And it felt really bad because every time I tried to copy their methods, tried to copy their studying style, it would just never click. It never worked. And from there, I just thought I wasn't getting something, that I was maybe lazy or just didn't want to enough. And there were a lot of times where it wasn't just about my inner feelings, it was external factors that impacted me. The workload is sometimes so intense that you need to keep up all the time. And it can get overwhelming if you don't know how to deal with it right. Sometimes the workload before exams gets so heavy that you forget to eat, that you forget to live just in order to pass, just in order to do well on an exam or get the grade that you want. But at the same time, as medical students, most of us don't know how to study right. We haven't figured out out our correct way of studying. We haven't figured out what works for us and what doesn't. And going through that experience alone is very life draining. It takes so much out of you, so much stress in order to figure out the exact way you're supposed to study in order for you to get consistent results. And what doesn't help is that the culture in medical school is very rigid. It's all about grinding. It's all about studying consistently five, six hours a day. It's always about the next big step, the next big exam, which don't get me wrong. I think it's a wonderful thing that people are spreading a positive message message about studying and motivating people to study more. But sometimes it can cause a lot of pressure on people because they don't think they're doing enough. And I think it's very important for us to discuss the other side where it's normal to burn out. It's normal to have a day off. It's normal to have a day where you can't study as much as the previous day. It's normal to screw up an exam. It's normal to mess up something. And it's normal for you sometimes to hang out with some friends. And it's normal for you to do your own hobbies instead of studying. And it's normal to discover new ways and not follow schedules and follow your own plan when it comes to studying. It's normal to find your own comfort. There's no specific formula you're supposed to follow in order to achieve success. I mean, come on, you can't get two people to agree on a very simple political opinion, let alone trying to get them to agree on a very complicated study method. Everyone is different. We're all human. We don't study the exact same way. We don't study consistently every single day. We're not machine. And the way we transform these negative experiences into positive ones is by acknowledging that they're there, by acknowledging and discussing among our friend groups by swearing and cussing out and making light of the different difficulties that we have by realizing hey it currently sucks there's a lot of overwhelming work but it's normal and acknowledging that these negative emotions are normal and they're part of the experience is the first step to move past them it's the first step to realize that hey it's temporary that there's nothing wrong with me inherently that it's just a thing that comes by and goes and this realization that it's part of the field and that it's normal is exactly what helped me move past all all my negative emotions and self-doubt. It still happens from time to time. It still does. It happened very recently, but it's easier to get out of it. It's easier to acknowledge that, hey, it's temporary, that it's there's nothing wrong with me. And that's exactly why I make these videos. I want to normalize the other sides of medicine. I want to normalize the other sides of students in general, that, hey, it's okay to not follow a schedule. It's okay not to write down notes. It's okay not to follow the traditional route of studying. It's okay to discuss these negative emotions. And those are really my thoughts when it comes to
to this. Obviously, one video is not enough. It's a huge topic, but at least it's a start. Now, if you want to know how to focus a little bit better in class and some of the tips I use and you might find useful, you can check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Have a fantastic day.